The O is the second one and is obedience. You must act in good faith and according to your principal's instructions as long as they're legal and ethical and moral. Those last two are on you, all right? So what I mean is this. If your client says, hey man, I've got lead-based paint, but I don't want you to tell anybody. No, dude, I can't do that. That's a federal law. We must disclose lead-based paint. So I wouldn't follow that instruction. I had one several years ago where the client was a young couple and they literally told me, and I'm not going to go into the reason why, but they literally told me, they said, hey, from Friday sundown till Monday morning sun up, we do not use any form of electricity. We don't go online. We don't use lights. We don't read emails. We don't do any of that. We don't use our cell phone. So if you get any uh, communication after about five o'clock on Friday, don't call me till Monday morning. That is a perfectly valid directive they, they could give to me. Now, you may think it makes no sense, and I thought it made no sense, but that's not the point. The point is that was a legal directive given to me, and I must obey what they said. You will also see this pop up a lot of times when your client wants to offer a number, and they're like, well, that property's listed at 200, and the buyer says, well, I want to offer 110. And you try and say, okay, you understand that's way below. It's only been on the market a day. They're probably not going to be that motivated. Should we think about a different offer? And they strongly say, no, I want you to write an offer at 110. Okay, I will do that because it's not my decision. And I will obey this lawful order to write them an offer to the seller for that amount of money. Okay. Loyalty, the L. 100% of your loyalty is required that it is goes towards the principal above your own interest. All right. So let's say there are five houses to look at and all and four of them pay 8% commission and one of them pays 1%. And you go, oh, dude, I really got a car payment. Uh, I need to make a bunch of money. Can you go look at these four? And he goes, no, no, no. The only one I really want to see is that one there. Their loyalty lies above your own. Okay, let's go look at that one. Disclosure. This is the D. You must disclose all of the defects at a property so that the other side is aware of the, the defects. All right. So like if there's a hole in the roof, you would disclose there is a hole in the roof. You must disclose all offers. The ability, uh, things like that, all right? Th those are what we call material defects. You must disclose any material defect in the property so that the other side is aware. If you are for the buyer side, you would disclose all of these other things here, okay? Okay, we're back. I just wanted to verify something here. <clears throat> There's a couple in here that look kind of confusing. If you are the agent of the buyer, you will disclose the lowest price to offer. Now, what that means is it doesn't mean you're going to tell the seller what the buyer's lowest price is. What this means is if you're the buyer's agent, you are going to disclose to them what the lowest price should be based on the, the comps of the property. Hey, I think this property is worth 200 and you want to offer 240. We may want to relook at your offer because the lowest price should be this. It is not, this is not saying I'm going to tell the seller, hey, we're going to offer 240, but he'll go down to or up to or whatever. So a couple of these look like they're confusing, but make sure you understand what they're really saying. You must disclose these. For the seller, you would disclose all offers. 
you would disclose if you have an interest, like, hey, I'm the buyer, okay? And if you're the buyer's agent, you must disclose all the deficiencies that you know of in the deal. Now, the next one is accounting. You must account for all of the agent's funds, like the earnest money. Make sure it's included when you go to close the deal. And then confidentiality. That's the C in AC. You must keep confidential information that is given to you unless that information is required to be disclosed by law or it eventually becomes public knowledge. So for a good example would be the motivation. That's one of the most confidential issues that you will see. When the seller says, hey, look, man, I want to sell the property. Uh, my wife's having an affair. I got fired at my job. I'm going to file bankruptcy, so I'm really motivated. You don't want to go out and market that property as, hey, bring us an offer. This guy's filing bankruptcy and he got fired. You can't do that. <clears throat> you can't hide things that are required by state law, like Hey, keep confidential, we have lead-based paint. No, I must disclose that material defect under federal law that you have lead-based paint. So, yes, you would keep stuff confidential, but you don't want to keep stuff confidential that would violate law. On the buyer's side, the buyer says, hey, look, I really, really want this property because my mother lives across the street. You would not disclose that to the seller because then he would say, well, shoot, don't go down in price because he's motivated to buy it. So there are things you would keep confidential that are information that is given to you. So that is the cold AC, care, obedience, loyalty, disclosure, accounting, and confidentiality. Now, when it comes to agency that is created, there are several different levels, if you will, of agency that can be created. The first level of agency is this thing called a universal agent. A universal agent is the big mama Luca. It has no limits on the authority. Typically, you guys have heard of power of attorney. That is a universal agent. You can do anything that person could do. You can enter into contracts. You may pay bills. You may sign their name to any kind of obligation. That is the power of attorney that maybe you have been given over certain people. I know I have power of attorney for my mother because she is infirm. I can sign her name. Typically, the universal agent you do not see in real estate. That power of attorney is given outside of that. The second level, just a tad down, is going to be this thing called a general agent. Now, what a general agent is, is somebody that may be given a range of uh, obligations or a range of responsibilities, usually within one area of a person's life. The best example here is a property manager. A property manager may do the banking for their client. They may screen tenants. They may sign leases. They may file court documents. They may hire contracts for lawn care, but it's only for that one property that they have been given uh, agency in. So a property manager is the best example for a general agent. The next level down would be a special agent. A special agent, licensed to kill, no, <laughs> A special agent is an agent that is given one task in one area of obligation. Can you think of a good example for a special agent? Hit pause and think about it and come right back. Well, the best example is a realtor, right? We are hired to list the property for sale. That's it or you're hired to find the buyer of property to buy, depending on which side you are. We can't enter into contracts. We can't bind our principal to a lawn care obligation. We do not have that power. 
We are only representing one specific transaction in one specific activity. We have been hired to market the property for sale. I guarantee you will get this call in your career. You will get a call and they go, hey, is that your sign on the corner of blah, 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 blah? And you go, yeah, because you think you've got a buyer, right? And they go, great, I'm the neighbor. Their lawn is too long. Can you get that mowed, please? Uh, no, I do not have that responsibility. See the sign in the yard? That's what I do. Now, I'll tell my client their yard is long and maybe they'll send somebody over, but I have no responsibility. I have no authority to do that because I have only been granted special agency inside of the listing agreement that the seller has signed with me. So those are the levels of agency. All right. You've got uh, universal agent, general agent, special agent. Now, you must disclose this agency to your client. Okay. So let me give you why this happens. Some of you know, may not know, some of you do know, some of you may not care. I have got multiple college degrees in nuclear engineering from Texas A&M and then a two advanced degrees from Purdue University. You and I could talk about a positive power coefficient all day on a nuclear reactor, right? <laughs> The problem with that conversation is what? You do not even know what a positive power coefficient is. I would have to explain to you what that meant before we could even talk about it. That same analogy holds true in the disclosure of agency. You must disclose to the client what agency actually means. Hey, I'm going to be your agent, which means I'll represent you in the deal. And you got to be honest with me and tell me all the defects. You got to give me access to the property to show it. And what I'm going to do is diligently market your property to try and find a buyer and explain that to all parties that are going to be bound by that agency agreement. We actually call this the written office policy. And this must be signed prior to even signing the listing. Think about that. A client cannot sign a listing agreement that creates agency if they are not fully aware of what agency really means. So you must disclose that and any of the alternative levels of service. Once again, are they full service? Are they limited service? You have to disclose this. You have to disclose it to all the parties involved, like the husband and the wife, to make sure they both understand. And you must explain that there are going to be disclosures they must give. So you will explain all of this agency prior to actually entering into the agency. Now, there are different levels of agency. We just discussed that general, universal, special, but there are also different styles. What I mean by that, the most common one is single agency. We mentioned that earlier, and now I'm going to define it. A single agency is when you have agency with only one party in the deal, either the buyer or the seller. Now, I'm gonna flip over here. I wanna show you something that will just blow your mind completely. And I still get practicing agents that make this mistake all the time. If you work with the seller, you are called the listing agent. And if you're only working with the seller, that is a single agency, right? I'm only working with one side. If you work with the buyer, you are called, check this out. The selling agent. No, that's not a typo. This is confusing. There is no buying agent. Now, 
to further confuse it, you work under a buyer's agency agreement, but you are not called the buying agent. You are called the selling agent if you work with a buyer. Think about this for a minute. As a seller, you hire an agent to list the property. That is my sole job as a listing agent, is to make it available for all the buyers to look at. So I'm gonna put a sign in the yard. I'm gonna put an ad in the newspaper. I'm gonna post social media uh, presence. I'm gonna make a special website dedicated to your property, whatever. All I am doing is making it available for other people to come and look at it. That's what a listing agent does. Now, the other side of that is the agent that works for the buyer. And the buyer calls you and says, hey, I saw a house, I want you to get me in, let's go look at it. So you walk into my listing, but you are the one that is going to sell the attributes to the buyer. You are the one that's going to say, well, you told me you wanted a bedroom for each one of your children, and this house has four bedrooms. Look at that big living room. Can you imagine your grand piano sitting there? You are the one selling the house to the buyer. You are the one that are making that emotional connection to get them interested. Therefore, you are called the selling agent. Do not get that confused, but it happens all the time. All right. I still get practicing agents that call me and go, well, my seller did this and as a blah, blah, blah. And as the selling agent, I'm like, time out. You are not the selling agent. You are the listing agent. The selling agent works for the buyer. All right. Trust me. <laughs> I know it sounds funny. Matter of fact, on most of the purchase agreement, it actually says listing agent, selling agent. 